kicks in. They're off in the Ogden Phipps, and Classic Point had a good start. Beholder is away well on the outside, and now here comes Antipathy inside of Classic Point. So two of the long shots will make the pace, and Beholder will sit third, three lengths off of them, and she's got close hatches to her inside. Princess of Silmar is fifth early, and she's seven and a half lengths off the lead at this stage of the race, with Belle Gallantee at the back of the field as they race up the backstretch through a 22-2 and two opening quarter mile, and it's Classic Point and Alex Solis out on the lead, and they're going to open up here. Classic Point opens up two from Antipathy, and Close Hatches is third right now, and she's got five lengths to make up. Beholder is after that. Then Belle Gallanty, Princess of Silmar, is dead last as the field races for the turn, and she's ten lengths off of Classic Point, who fires off a 45 flat half mile. Classic Point into the far turn in front by three lengths, and now Close Hatches draws up alongside of Antipathy, and they start to get closer with each and every stride. Classic Point's lead is about to go away, and it goes away first to Close Hatches. Close Hatches has taken the lead, and now Beholder begins to move up on the outside. Antipathy is next. Princess of Silmar still at the back of the field, but she's lengthening her stride on the far outside, and they're into the stretch, and it's Close Hatches in front. Beholder and Princess of Silmar are coming. It will be a dramatic fifth here, a furlong to go. Close Close Hatches, here's Princess of Silmar, Beholder between those two. Close Hatches, Princess of Silmar, Beholder not going with him. Close Hatches, Princess of Silmar, a final bid. The two of them hit it together. I think Close Hatches, Princess of Silmar was there with her on the wire, and Antipathy was third in a final time of 1 minute 40.55 seconds. The head to head to head battle we've been waiting for. Close Hatches, Princess of Silmar, Beholder in the Ogden Phipps. Maybe Close Hatches by a head over Princess of Silmar. This is what we were waiting for. This kind of a stretch run from the three favorites. Down the backside, Joel Rosario and Gary Stevens looking over at each other. Further back off the pace than normally either horse or rider is, at least in their previous races, but very comfortable where they were. Both moved kind of as a team, turning for home. And then the horse race was on with Princess of Silmar trying to draw a bead on him. Joel Rosario is, in my opinion, one of the strongest, if not the strongest riders I'm in America. Reminds me of your dad, Lafitte Pinkai Jr. Uh, and I think, you know, at least looking at these Phillies coming down the stretch, he was, a, if not the difference, certainly a huge help to Close Hatches, who's winning her third straight race. Slow it down inside, in between horses. Close Hatches, pink cap, Princess of Silmar outside, stretching their necks for the wire. It looks like, maybe from that angle, by a nose plus, Joel Rosario and Close Hatches still awaiting the result of the photo. There it is. Close Hatches by about a head over Princess Asilmar, who didn't really look like towards the end as we now get down to Donna Brothers with winning rider Joel Rosario. Donna. Well, Lafitte, while you were weighing in with your opinion, I asked Joel what he thought. He said, oh, yeah, yeah, I won it. So <laughs> <laughs> Joel knew he got there. Joel, this filly's now won eight races from 11 stars. How special is she? She's very special. You know, she's just, uh, she's that kind of filly. Just, you know, she's go there and then she does the job. You know, she, you know, I just, I, w I, w I would think maybe, you know, to stay in, you know, let me probably in front because it was not a speed, but, you know, the two horses, the five horse and the other horses, they come in they're very quick and then just, you know, I just let it go in and then just, you know, never take a hold, they just she do the job. So you felt like there would be even more speed in the race than there was? Yeah. Actually, you know, it, it Billy told me you probably, you know, the, you know, the horse who was in front, maybe he wanted to show some speed, but I was surprised they're going very quick. Tonalist today in the Belmont Stakes. This is the horse you won the Peter Pan on. How do you think he's going to like this track? How about the mile and a half distance? Well, you know, all the, every horse in the race is, you know, going first time, mile and a half. You know, I think you have a very good chance. I, you know, I think uh, California Crown is a definite horse to be. <laughs> exactly. I think everybody agrees with you. Good luck, Joel. Let's go to Bob Newmeyer. We're the winning trainer, Bill Mott, with a big, big smile for a very good reason. How gutsy was this filly today? Very gutsy. I mean, she held off the challenge of uh, two of the top fillies in the country, two of the finalists for the Eclipse Award Championship last year and, and the champion. And uh, she ran a, a bang-up race today. The, 
uh, Joel rode her very well. I mean, it looked like there was, you know, the one speed horse who set real good fractions and, you know, he got her in position to win when he turned for home. It was a guessing game as to who would go to the lead. Were you then surprised that Joel was maybe a little farther back than perhaps you would have thought? I, I pointed out to him in the paddock that I thought the, the horse that was on the lead, the four horse, would, would be on the lead. He, he, she was coming out of sprint races and had run some real fast fractions before and I just had a an, a, an idea that they might send her and he did the right thing and just let our filly settle, but he, you know, put her in good position, leaving the 5 8 pole and got up and, you know, got her out and got her clear. Congratulations. Thank you. Bill Mott. Mott joining elite company, Shug McGahee, Alan Jerkins, the late great Bobby Frankel, Todd Pletcher, as the only trainers to have won this Ogden Phipps for a third time. Right. Close hatches with last year's Kentucky Derby winning jockey, Joel Rosario. Jerry, what about the trip for Princess Cecilia on the outside? Yeah, well, it looks like she was drawing a beat. She was drawing a beat on the on Beholder and Close Hatches as they turned down the lane. But I, as I pointed out earlier, the one-turn mile is not to Princess of Silmar's advantage. Two turns seem to tire horses out a little bit more. One-turn mile, speed horses seem to, to hold their speed and hold on a little bit better. So it was a more difficult task for Princess of Silmar than if they were going around two turns. You, you, you run this race again on a mile racetrack, mm -hmm. maybe Princess of Silmar wins because that's to her advantage. Beholder, the favorite, finishing off the board as we take a look at the photo by that much. Close hatches over Princess of Silmar. Beholder, any excuses for her off the board finish, Jerry? Not really. Uh, Gary sensed the hot pace early. He had her a little further back than normal. Uh, he bided his time. He made the move at a perfect time. But she didn't fight very long down the stretch, which she usually does. But again, she didn't draw away from her competition like she does in California, so maybe she got discouraged. We do have those results in following this grade one Ogden Phipps close hatches. Racing's newest multi-millionaire with the winner's share of that million dollar purse, $783.53. Princess of Silmar having to settle for second on this day. Antithope, really good running run to complete the trifecta. Posing for pictures, close hatches owned by the...